Welcome to the first lecture of the Blockchain Business Management and Planning module. This lecture's topic is the blockchain sector, an industry overview. To understand the content of this lecture, we recommend that you have previously watched the lectures of Module 1, Introduction to Blockchain Methodology, and Module 3, Fundamentals of Blockchain and Distributed Ledger Technology. However, even without prior knowledge from the previous modules, you should be able to understand the main content of this lecture. The learning material is designed to provide you with important future skills, ALS 2020, to gain the ability to effectively manage or develop blockchain services and processes. Today's lecture is structured as follows. We start with an overview of the learning outcomes of this lecture. Afterwards, we will present various already existing blockchain use cases. We will start with the most well-known use case of blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies. Furthermore, we will talk about the use of the technology for the public sector on the one hand, for digital identity management and digital voting. Blockchain technology also has applications in the development of smart grids in the energy sector, as well as the overarching concept of smart cities. This slide shows an overview of the knowledge skills, responsibilities, and autonomies you will acquire in this lecture. The aim of the lecture is to show you various use cases for the application of blockchain technology. Based on them, they should derive important and sensible possibilities for the use of this technology. This ability will be deepened in the following lectures through specific methodologies. On the 31st of October 2008, at the peak of the global banking and financial crisis, the first white paper, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, was published on the best-known application of blockchain technology, the Bitcoin blockchain. Developed by the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto, the background idea for the development of the Bitcoin blockchain was to weaken powerful intermediaries such as large banks or other trust institutions. These powerful intermediaries do not only exist in the financial sector, but also in other industries, where there are increasingly large central entities that have control over the data of their customers. In contrast to the system of Visa, PayPal or other large money transfer systems, the booking of a transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain is transparently traceable and not limited to the internal accounting and the servers of the intermediary. Before we turn to the exact functions of the Bitcoin blockchain, we should first take a look at what the function of a currency and money in general are. According to the International Monetary Fund, money has three important characteristics. First, money is a store of value, i.e. it must have the ability to retain value over time. Second, money is a unit of account. This means that money must have the ability to be used as a standardized unit for calculating and indicating prices. Third, money should be able to be used as a medium of exchange. Money must allow for the exchange and execution of purchases and sales. There's continuous debate among experts whether cryptocurrencies have all the characteristics of money. When we talk about cryptocurrencies, we're referring to a subcategory of digital currencies. Digital currencies are internet-based media that are considered an alternative medium of exchange. A distinction is made between two different types of digital currency. One is electronic money, also called e-money, and the other is virtual currency. They are distinguished by various characteristics. E-money is legally regulated means of payment and is represented in one's own account. In the unit of traditional currencies, such as dollars, euros, or pounds, virtual currency, on the other hand, is not regulated by the state and can be created by a private company. Cryptocurrencies are also classified as virtual currencies. These are digital tokens based on a peer-to-peer -peer network and a blockchain protocol. Here, the currency is not represented in a traditional monetary unit, but in the form of invented monetary units, such as Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, etc. The acceptance and value of the currency depends on the community in which it is traded. Some use a specifically built blockchain for this purpose, and others use already existing blockchain protocols. The Bitcoin blockchain was created in 2008. Its currency, also called Bitcoin, is still the most widespread and successful cryptocurrency. It was traded on a crypto exchange platform in July 2010 with an equivalent uh, value of $0.06 per Bitcoin and a market capital of all Bitcoins of $277,000. US Two years later, it reached an equivalent of $25 US per Bitcoin. In 2013, the currency reached a value of 1,242 US dollars and a market capitalization of around 13.5 billion US dollars. In the meantime, the value reached around 8,150 US dollars. 
In summer of 2022, the value is over 20,000 US dollars per Bitcoin. Bitcoin has increased its market value by over 550% in the last five years. The Bitcoin currency is a network good and is controlled by supply and demand. Network goods are characterized by the fact that they increase in value the more people consume the good. The actual benefit thus depends on the size of the network. The value of Bitcoin can fall and rise as quickly as shares and is sensitive to press releases and media reports. How successful the currency becomes thus depends on the acceptance of the broad masses. It is also important to differentiate between coins and tokens. They can be distinguished as follows. Coins are quantifiable units of a virtual currency to represent money, e.g. Bitcoin. The interchangeability of equivalent units, fungibility, is given as individual units can be replaced in the same way as coins or notes. Tokens are quantifiable units that represent the identity of any virtual or physical object. Fungibility is always given when individual units can be replaced by others of equal value. Non-fungible tokens are those whose value representation is linked to the individuality of a unit, e.g. registered shares. Here are a few examples of coins and tokens. On the one hand, we have equity tokens. Equity tokens represent a share representation that gives the owner a stake in a company, for example. Further, there are asset tokens. We can differentiate between stable coins and asset-backed tokens. Stable coins are an example of mapping state currencies to the units of a cryptocurrency. Ideally, the coin should always be exchangeable one-to-one -one with the packed national currency. Asset-backed tokens refer specifically to tokens backed by physical assets. This could be, for example, gas, oil, gold, or other valuable materials that are also traded on the stock exchange. With asset tokens, investors expect very low fluctuations and less loss of value. Utility tokens provide a purpose-related benefit that is achieved by operating the blockchain system behind the cryptocurrency. One application is the procurement of vehicles for a ride-sharing service. Digital collectibles are non-fungible tokens to which a value is attributed as an individual collectible. With the acquisition of a collectible, ownership and control of an individual and distinguishable token is transferred. That also includes NFTs. One idea for further use of the blockchain is identity management. While in the real world, the identity of people can be determined with official documents such as passports and driving license, in the online world, there is no secure way that has been flawlessly established so far. The so-called self-sovereign identity, or SSI for short, addresses two fundamental problems of the current management of user data. Firstly, users currently have to assign unique and secure passwords for each account. This can be largely solved by a single sign-on, in combination with standardized electronic identities. If such a system is based on a blockchain, it also eliminates the need for intermediaries to manage data for the users. Secondly, this addresses the problem of data sovereignty. The control of one's own identity, the creation of identity identifiers, and the linkage with user data emanates from the user. The idea behind identity management in the blockchain is to extend this concept to include personal data and identity management and verification software. Typical functions are the generation of identity identifiers from the user, the linking of data with individual identity identifiers, and the validation of identity identifiers with a central instance. The generation of identifiers with their links to data depends on the application. For example, if an identifier is generated for an online shop, at least the user's name and address are linked. For government applications, for example, for access to voting systems, further data is linked and authenticated outside the blockchain. Decentralized identifiers are digital characteristics, for example, bank data, personal data, financial IDs, and so on that can be created independently of controlling authorities and are linked to an overarching account, the wallet. They are machine-readable, self-sovereign, and use the blockchain as a trust anchor. In a decentralized network, DIDs are embedded in verifiable credentials, VCs. A VC could be a digital passport, and the DID is a global ID, for example. The government can be the issuer of this VC. The VC then contains the ID of the holder and a cryptographic signature of the issuer. The VC holder can present his VC to another entity, a verifier. The verifier can check the authenticity of the information in the VC without a central authority. He can also verify that the VC is linked to the issuer and the holder. 
Electronic elections, digital voting, or e-voting is another topic where the blockchain technology can be used. The advantages of using blockchain technologies for e-voting are obvious. There is no central authority, government, or administrative body that could potentially control and in extreme cases manipulate the electronic voting process. On the other hand, every citizen who takes part in the election can verify whether their vote was counted. In addition, all participants have access to voting results. The following principles are repeatedly emphasized for the use of an electronic voting system or for e-voting. Equality. Weighing of votes is not permitted, i.e. voting equality applies to all. Eligibility. Only eligible voters can participate in electronic elections. No reusability. Voters cannot cast their vote more than once. Each eligible voter has exactly one vote. One man, one vote. Authentication. The identity of the voter can be clearly verified. Privacy. The privacy and thus the secrecy of the vote remain protected. Fairness. No early partial results may be published in order to not influence other voters. Verifiability and completeness. The correctness of the voting results can be verified individually as well as universally. Individual verifiability means that a citizen can verify that his or her vote has been counted. Universal verifiability means the process of checking and confirming that the outcome of the vote corresponds with the sum of all valid votes. In their platform independent secure blockchain based voting system, U et al. 2018, the authors classify e voting systems into three categories based on one salient feature, cryptocurrency. Zero knowledge proof process. This involves a proof process between the two parties of a transaction, in this case voting or ballot, i.e. between the prover and the verifier, which allows the verifier to check the veracity of the ballot without knowing the content of the ballot. The verifier therefore has zero knowledge of the specific vote cast and the verifier in turn can prove that they have a correctly completed ballot paper without revealing the content of their ballot and smart contract. Smart contracts can be used to implement an e-voting system. Smart contracts are protocols based on the blockchain that map written agreements, contracts, and carry out the processing and verification of the contract clauses. The blockchain is a distributed ledger system where the content of the individual blocks can be consulted at any time. If this system is now to be used for electronic elections, the question arises as to how votes can be kept secret. One possibility is to use blind signatures. In general, blind signatures can be used to generate digital signatures for data, documents, ballots, payments, and so on, without the supplier of digital signatures being able to see this data. David Chom explains the procedure of blind signatures by the following analogy. The ballot paper that is to be signed is put into an envelope with a blueprint, and the election organizer signs this envelope blindly, i.e. without knowing its contents. Thanks to the blueprint, the signature is printed on the ballot paper and the voter can anonymously throw the blindly signed ballot paper into the ballot box. Three groups of participants are envisaged for blockchain-based e-voting. Citizens, organizers, and inspectors. The voting citizens are the eligible voters of an electronic ballot and must register accordingly with the organizers. The organizers conduct the, organizers conduct the election and verify the electronic voting process. They also publish the results at the end of the election. Inspectors are appointed to limit the power of the organizers. Inspectors interact with voters. Among other things, they assign blind signatures. They also have access to the blockchain and conduct various audits. To understand this example, it's important to understand the basic concept of asymmetric encryption. Let's look at a small example. For simplicity, let's limit ourselves to one voter, Alice, and assume that only one organizer, Bob, and only one inspector, Carol, are involved. After a successful registration by the voter with the organizer, the voter can cast her digital vote in two phases. In the first phase, she obtains two blind signatures, one from the organizer, case A1, and one from the expector, case 1B. Specifically, the digital ballot for Alice looks like this. Alice fills in the ballot paper by pressing the desired voting code, which generates a vote string V. A vote string V consists of the three parts, choice code, X bits, zero string, Y bits, where all bits are zero, and the random string, Z bits. The zero string is needed for the well-formedness of the ballot, well-formed voting string. The random string is needed to distinguish the different votes of all voters with the same ballot code. As an example, consider a ballot for a political program where the voter can enter yes, 
choice code 1, 0, or no, choice code 0, 1, or abstain, choice code 0, 0. When electing multiple political mandate holders, a corresponding choice code would have to be provided for all voting options. After Alice has created vote string V, Alice's computer generates a hash value for V, i.e. hash V. In addition, the calculation function C for creating blind signatures is performed, and Alice sends C, Alice, hash V, encrypted to Bob using Bob's public key. The organizer Bob verifies Alice's message with verify voter Alice and signs C Alice hash V with his signature function S, the signing function. If Alice is registered as a voter, he then sends S Bob C Alice hash V back to Alice, encrypted of course, with Alice's public key. Alice now obtains the blind signature from Inspector Carroll in an analogous way, see case 1B. She then has the two blind signatures, one from the organizer Bob and one from Inspector Carroll. Alice's vote can be anonymous by Alice extracting the two signatures, as Bob, hash V, and as Carol, hash V, and submitting the two signatures together with the original of her ballot paper. For extraction, she only has to apply the inverse calculation function for blind signatures, C minus 1, i.e. as Bob, hash V, is C minus 1, Alice, as Bob, C Alice hash V. Respectively, S Carol hash V is C minus 1, Alice S Carol C Alice hash V. The steps listed here, such as obtaining signatures and voting anonymously, are stored in the blockchain. Manipulation of digital ballots is thus prevented. The strength of the protocol presented by Liu and Wang. 2017 is that the management of digital ballots with blockchain technology ensures transparency. In other words, voters can verify at any time whether their vote has been counted, individual verifiability. In addition, the final vote result, which was calculated and published by the organizer, can be verified, for example, by the inspector Carroll, universal verifiability. Further audits can be carried out if required. In addition to the transparency provided by the blockchain, blind signatures allow voters to cast their votes anonymously, see privacy requirement. In other words, no one can reconstruct the link between a ballot and a voter, and the, and, the elector, and the electorate remains protected. Another interesting and frequently discussed use case for blockchain is the application in smart cities. The basic idea behind smart cities is that the enrichment of city-relevant functions with information and communication technologies can contribute to the efficient and sustainable socio-economic design of urban space. Building on system theory thinking, the majority of today's smart city concepts and projects focus on increasing efficiency and sustainability. The main feature of smart and cognitive cities is the collection, analysis, and processing of data to generate information that can be used to address specific problems or needs in the city. A city can become smart or smarter by collecting high-quality data that is made available to the different stakeholders of a city. This allows them to better address specific problems or needs in the city. Big data and IoT, a network of objects equipped with sensors, software and network connectivity will play an increasingly important role in this. The objects are able to collect large amounts of data, cost and energy efficiently, forward it and autonomously exchange it with each other. In addition, they can cooperate with existing internet infrastructures, the entire urban environment is equipped with sensors that collect data that is made available in the cloud, for example. Thus, each public device is both a useful device in itself and a fast, inexpensive, and ubiquitous means of data collection based on sensors and actuators. Integrating distributed smart components through an extensive network of mobile and static release points. This creates a permanent interaction between city dwellers and technology that surrounds them. According to Pfeffli et al. 2018, smart cities have different architecture layers, the service layer, the digital layer, and the physical layer, as well as the transversal process layer. Based on the service layer, it is possible to work out which service should be offered in a particular city. In order to analyze needs, the service layer can be differentiated into different levels. The first level consists of sectors of action. These are superordinate topics. The second level comprises fields of action, which are assigned to the sectors of action, 
and concretized there. The third level represents the concrete services and products of a city, which are derived from the sectors and fields of action. The digital layer refers to key technologies that are needed to provide services, including blockchains. The API, Application Programming Interface Architecture, is particularly important for this layer, with the aim of interface programming that enables the cost-efficient and rapid linking and integration of different technologies. The physical layer consists of technical infrastructure categories. They essentially comprise the urban physical infrastructure, for example, roads, buildings, fiber optic cables, and mobile phone antennas, as well as physical available information technology infrastructure. As with the digital layer, the question is what infrastructure is needed to provide the desired service. With the help of the transverse process layer, it is possible to analyze how the process must be designed so that the corresponding services and products can be provided. Furthermore, on the basis of the process layer, the relevant persons and stakeholders for the provision of a certain service can be determined and the question of who assumes which function or role and how the information flows must proceed so that the service or product can be successfully offered and clarified. There are several areas of application for blockchain technology in the smart city. One would be supply chain management. The term supply chain refers to the value chain from the raw material supplier to the end customer of a company. This leads via the planning of material requirements through purchasing and order processing to delivery to the customer. Supply chain management is mainly concerned with the various criteria of process optimization. The three main criteria mentioned in this context are cost, time, and quality. The main goal of many companies is to increase profit, and the most common way to achieve this is to minimize the cost of the manufacturing process. The optimization of the time aspect is mainly initiated by people outside the company, the consumers. Long delivery and response times of the company can be a reason for the end consumer to turn to the competitor for the next order. The optimization point quality can be related to the process as well as to the product. Good process quality is characterized by consistent and reproducible execution. An important tool for supply chain management and thus also for process optimization is the documentation of process flows. It helps to standardize processes and the quality of production. Up to now, a large part of the individual process steps in the value chain have been controlled and documented by separate decentralized instances. These centralized systems are easily manipulated and prone to hacking or corruption. In addition, the respective documentation is not uniform and does not offer the necessary interoperability to quickly identify and correct errors in the process flows. An integration of blockchain as a uniform documentation protocol offers the possibility of creating a complete, chronologically determinable and transparent process history. This allows errors to be efficiently assigned and clearly tracked. The integration of machines and systems that are connected to the internet is becoming more common in general corporate process flows. As a result, the blockchain can enable communication between different smart devices. These applications can be taken even further in supply chain management. Blockchain can help to expand the supply chain into the supply chain of things, in which, for example, warehouse systems automatically and transparently reorder goods via smart contracts and place delivery orders as soon as a certain material stock limit has been undershot. These optimization options can help improve inventory management and reduce waste and costs. The blockchain thus enables end-to-end -end transparency to the entire value chain, which would have been inconceivable before on this scale and in such detail. An example of the application of blockchain in supply chain management is thermal monitoring and packages. Thermal monitoring makes it possible to monitor and record the temperature inside parcels along the entire transport route. That means that sensitive goods such as medicine travel even more safely. This ensures compliance with regulatory requirements. This can work as follows. The shipper encloses a measuring sensor with the parcel and this measures the temperature along the entire transport route and records it. The measurement data is stored in a blockchain. This ensures trust and security as it can be proven that the data has not been manipulated subsequently. In addition, the blockchain will allow for greater automation of administrative processes in the future, such as automated invoicing for the customer. The data is read out and transmitted automatically. If the messenger scans the consignment during delivery, the measurement data is read out 
and transmitted to the sender within a short time, without the package having to be opened. Any temperature deviations during the shipping are known shortly after delivery. Thanks to uninterrupted measurements, it is possible to determine where the deviation occurred. In the outgoing goods department of the sender, in the vehicle or the parcel center of the postal service, this makes it easier to find the cause and provides important facts for quality management. Another example that is also connectable to the overarching theme of smart cities is smart grids. With the increased use of renewable energy, the electricity market is undergoing a massive transformation that cannot only be described with the term decentralization. Rather, this transformation is characterized by a multi-layered interplay of existing and new technologies from the energy sector, automation technology, information and communication technology, as well as existing and new actors. Blockchain technology has the potential to intensify the dynamics of this transformation. The international efforts in terms of climate change and reduction of CO2 emission catastrophes such as Fukushima and an accompanying new awareness of the environment and sustainable use of resources among the general population, but also innovative technologies for energy generation and storage available to everyone have a massive impact on the energy system. Renewable energy sources are increasingly being integrated and measures to increase efficiency and reduce consumption, keyword demand response, are gaining more acceptance and are considered the key in the so-called energy transition. This means serious decentralization as well as a massive use of sensors using information and communication technologies. This results in the so-called smart grid. A smart grid is defined as an electrical system that uses information, bidirectional and cyber secure communication technologies and intelligent software applications across the entire spectrum of the energy system in an integral manner. From generation to storage to the endpoints of electricity consumption. This development is transforming the previously rigid value creation structures into dynamic value creation networks. A paradigm shift is taking place in the energy supply from the to you to with you. It is important to understand that the transition from the conventional power grid to the smart grid is not only a technological innovation, but also goes hand in hand with an organizational, political, socio-economic change. Digitization and liberalization are changing the socio-technical system, electricity market, and bring with them numerous new transactions, not only in the economic sense, but also events, control signals, generally digital data sets among the factors and the subsystems. The prerequisite is, of course, the secure, efficient and traceable execution of these transactions. Blockchain technology can make a significant contribution to this. Application scenarios include, among others, electricity trading at macro and meso level, as well as neighborhood and tenant electricity models, certification and proof of origin for renewable energy sources, type, location, and time of energy generation, control of energy consumption behavior of networked smart devices, Internet of Things, in real time, load control, automation of the billing process, including payment and or remuneration of levels, charges, etc., also across sectors, asset management at distribution grid operators and utilities. Blockchain technology means distributed consensus building directly between actors without additional intermediaries and the mapping of values and rights, transparency of origin, transparency of origin and ownership. It enables smart contracts, for example, for cooperation and performance accounting of autonomous systems and stands for traceability and irreversibility. This disposition is the perfect target oriented basis for the interaction of the different actors in the organizationally and spatially decentralized electricity market. Technologies available to everyone, such as photovoltaic systems and home energy storage, are the obvious features of decentralization in the energy sector. The consumer of electrical energy is no longer dependent on an energy supply company, but can also act as an energy producer and, if necessary, as a provider of storage capacity. The associated concept of the energy presumer will play an important role in the further development of energy systems in terms of decentralization and heterogeneity, but also stability and security. A prosumer is an actor that produces, stores, and consumes its own energy. This does not necessarily mean that the prosumer is self-sufficient. He is still integrated into the electricity grid and can thus compensate for an energy deficit from the grid and conversely, release a surplus of self-produced energy into the grid. The strength of the concept becomes particularly clear when individual prosumers join together to form prosumer communities, i.e. a crowd. Crowd energy refers to the cooperation of prosumers 
and the pooling of their resources with the help of information and communication technology. Teufel and Teufel 2014. Prosumers in a crowd primarily consume the energy they produce themselves and are actors in energy microtrading by trading surplus energy produced but also additionally required energy with other prosumers in the crowd. They are thus ideal for blockchain application or platforms. It should be noted that energy exchange in such corporations is not necessarily based strictly on monetary approaches. Rather, it can be seen that responsible action in the community in terms of efficiency and security of supply are important features. The concept presented by Teufel and Teufel in 2014 can also be interpreted as a decentralized autonomous organization. A decentralized network of autonomous agents which is based on an outcome optimal mode of operation. This means that for example PV systems and storage units carried out direct peer-to-peer -peer energy transactions with consumers present in the network. For example, charging stations for e-mobility. Blockchain technology is the ideal basis for crowd systems. Regardless of their form, smart contracts, traceability and proof of ownership provenance, identity management, prosumers and machines, and small volume transactions. There are advantages as well as dis there are advantages as well as disadvantages to the use of blockchain technology. Various relevant points are listed in the visual. Advantages of blockchain usage are the immunity of data that is largely guaranteed. Furthermore, is the integrity of data ensured by being identical with all nodes in the network. For the aspect of identity, each value can be assigned to a participant. Intermediaries are not necessary due to smart contracts. New standards of data storage make it possible to connect different functions of different providers, adding an aspect of connectivity. For prosumers, the blockchain enables easy access to the energy market. Consumers can more easily and qualitatively understand and evaluate their electricity consumption. The ongoing hype around blockchain technology boosts the research in the field of the decentralized energy market. Disadvantages of blockchain usage Electricity costs Each transaction consumes computing power and thus energy. Liability issues and consumer rights regarding blockchain technology are still unclear. Data protection, especially in regards to the DSGVO, are unclear as well. The classic energy network is expanded to include the insecure component of IT so cybersecurity becomes relevant. If an attack gains access to 51% of nodes, they can make changes in the blockchain. Those are called 51% attacks. Post-quantum cryptography is not yet far advanced and mostly a discussion within research fields. In the event of failure of the peer-to-peer -peer network, there can be a threat to the security of supply. Conclusion and technology check. Various blockchain use cases have now been presented to you to give you a general idea on how the use of the technology can extend far beyond the financial sector. However, to avoid hitting all the problems of the world with a blockchain hammer, the German Association for Information Science, BITCOM, has developed a simple guideline on how to check whether the use of blockchain technology makes sense for an application concept. To justify the use of the blockchain, the following question should be answered with yes. Can a trustworthy data input be expected? Is more than one party responsible for updates and upgrades? Could parties attempt to modify the data after it has been entered into the system? Are there significant disadvantages to using an intermediary? If the answer to any of these questions is no, then the use of blockchain technology is not appropriate and another technology should be used.